having consulted the congregation for the causes of the saints, we, by our apostolic authority, decree that the venerable servant of God, Michael McGivney, be given the title of blessed. I think the beatification was a message to the world, sharing what knights have known all along, that Father McGivney is a faithful friend to Catholic men, families, and parish priests. He is a model for all of us. And now it's been proven that he is also a powerful intercessor. Just as Father McGivney saw the problems of his parishioners and sought practical solutions, so he continues to respond to the prayers of those who seek his help for problems big and small. I believe Father McGivney can connect in a special way with young Catholics. Despite his early death, Father McGivney's quiet but determined leadership still reverberates today. Young priests and seminarians can look to Father McGivney as a humble yet strong model for their own ministry. When Luke and I were in college back in 2011 to 2015, our first night's council was a college council. And that surrounded us with young men who were faith-filled, sacrificial, and really, I think, jump-started our vocation, both of us, into the seminary. From an evangelization standpoint, McGivney has been very pivotal in both of our lives. How can we step out of the church and reach people? What's a parish priest in the 2020s called to do? I remember reading the book, Parish Priest. Toward the end, Blessed Michael McGivney was reflecting on a situation that occurred years before where he encountered a young woman who had passed away. And he was quoted as saying something like, I want to face death like her. So not only did Blessed McGivney look to the saints for help, but he also looked to the ordinary people at his parish. I couldn't think of a better model of a parish priest who did that. When you're willing to enter into formation, when you're willing to open your heart and allow the, the universal church to, to form you, this is a clear image of what it looks like when you are willing to go all in. We too can open our hearts like Blessed McGivney. He shows that it's possible. Father McGivney Catholic High School was founded in 2012. Father McGivney's mission and focus to make sure to get out there and show that his Catholic faith was a way to kind of strengthen the community was a perfect legacy for what we wanted our school and our students to emulate. I would say Father McGivney is active and alive for me today. His example of helping others and being selfless shows us how we should behave and live our lives. The beatification of Michael J. McGivney means a great deal to this school. I'd like to say that the second miracle has already happened by opening up this Catholic school. This was the first Catholic school open in this diocese in 80 years, and we continue to excel academically, spiritually, and drawing our kids ever closer to Jesus. Every day, at the end of the day, we all pray to Father McGivney. I do feel Father McGivney would hear my prayer because he cares for others. We are currently expanding. Our enrollment's continuing to go up. We've had tremendous support from our Knights, and that's the real strength of, I think, our school. We're looking forward to continued growth and moving forward. In my own life and in the lives of so many that we hear from, Father McGivney, I would say, is first and foremost a friend. We know from the heartfelt prayer requests that we get and the favors that are submitted to the Father McGivney Guild that those who call upon him experience a closeness of his presence in their daily struggles, in their doubts and the questions that they're grappling with, in times of sickness and family strife, and even in periods of financial stress and unemployment. These are problems that Father McGivney dealt with as a priest, and he responds to them now from his place in heaven. It was actually very scary because we have gotten these phone calls before from my father. They 
took him off at 1.30 in the morning, and I found out that he was being admitted and had COVID. I thought in my head, I don't think he's going to survive this. It was hard, but I was blessed to have some of the knights tell me we we're doing this prayer vigil. It was a time when all of us were extremely concerned. Turning to Blessed Father McGivney was the logical thing to do. We said the rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and then of course the prayer to Father McGivney. A lot of people didn't know Vince uh, that came, but it was just the call to prayer uh, got to them. That's a tribute to the, to the nights in action. Then the next day, he actually started to improve. And they called and said I could come and see him. My wife entered the room. She put her hand in mine. And then when I opened my eyes so it was my wife, I really brightened up. It wasn't until I came home that I heard about the prayer vigil on January 18th. It all came together for me as to why my recovery happened very shortly after that. We asked for the intercession of Father McGivney because it is God working through the saints. The prayer vigil, he did something because we can see the fruits. I am convinced that the Blessed Mother and Father McGivney in their intervention allowed me the opportunity to let me complete my mission here on Earth. There was this emotion of love, which I'm getting emotional now speaking about it, that, that they would do this. I have such a new understanding on the power of prayer. It is real. When more than two or three people get together to pray, Christ is in their presence, and this is powerful. He can, he can change anything. Charity and unity were the founding principles of the order, and for Father McGivney, they were not abstractions. Charity and unity call us to action. They demand the time and energy of any man who would be a Knight of Columbus. Catholics in Connecticut saw Father McGivney's self-sacrifice day after day. It inspired many to become knights and to unite their own efforts in selfless acts of charity. That legacy lives on today in the two million members of the Knights of Columbus who serve their communities and serve the church in countless ways. When Father Michael McGivney founded the Knights of Columbus, it really was about charity, and it's that charitable effort that really is the glue that bonds us together as Knights of Columbus. La beatificación del Padre McGivney implica para nosotros la realidad de lo que es practicar la caridad. Implica perseverancia, implica guía, implica una forma de vivir dándose al otro. The charitable work we do today defines the Knights of Columbus. We're a Catholic organization taking our beliefs out into the community, the way Father McGivney dreamed of back when he founded the Knights. Well, the Knights of Columbus is a family organization. That's what we're here to do, is to support families and to bring the love of God just by providing those things that those families need. When Father McGivney founded the Knights of Columbus, it was to take care of other Catholics, of other people in the community that needed assistance. And so I really believe Father McGivney, if he were around today, would be right here side by side with us doing this service because it is what the Knights are all about. Father McGivney's vision for the Knights of Columbus was to be a protector of families and that includes at all stages of life. The Mother of Life Pregnancy Center is a free service to our community. The support of the night sometimes is overwhelming because it's constant. Every once in a while, we're challenged with raising money for an ultrasound machine. And at that time, the old ultrasound machine that we had donated about 10 years ago was on its last legs. A mother almost immediately unites with her child when she gets to see the life. And the night started like wildfire. 
getting the ball rolling to raise the money. Everyone obviously resorted to their prayer cards and prayed constantly to Father McGivney's intercession. We prayed to Father McGivney. We asked everybody when we started the project to pray. And lo and behold, that couple from Bristol who really helped us just happened to stop by here one day. We told them about the amount that we needed to raise. And the first words out of their mouth were, we want to pay for half your ultrasound machine. We met the grant like that. Throughout the whole project with the ultrasound machine, Father McGivney was watching over us, and I feel Father McGivney had an influence. Just the joy that they had that the machine was there and the machine was running. It just solidifies our mission. We had the relic here of Blessed Father Michael McGivney that we were able to venerate and touch the sonogram machine. I am sure that Father McGivney will be involved in our future here. We do pray for his canonization. We know that he will intercede for our clients because he has a heart and passion for them. The feast day of Blessed Michael McGivney is August 13th, and it's a day for knights and their families and for all those devoted to Father McGivney to celebrate America's newest blessed. It's a day for priests to celebrate one of their own and to model their ministry after the humble and hardworking and effective example of Father McGivney. It's also a day for lay people to embrace their role in parish life and the mission of charity, unity, and fraternity that Father McGivney set when he founded the Knights of Columbus. The church has recognized the heroic virtue and holiness of this parish priest, and all Catholics have the privilege on this feast day to come together in prayer and petition. So we thank God for the gift of Blessed Michael McGivney, and we ask for his intercession.